Project Lunar is now available for your Sega Genesis Mini, and you can install many new games on it. Stick around, I'll show you all the steps you need to take to get it done, and it's all coming up next. If you like original video content on restoring, repairing, and modding consoles and other great video game content, click the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on great new videos as they're published to the channel. Thanks so much! Hi, my name is Blaine if you're new here. This might be one of the easiest mods you'll ever do. All you have to do is go to the Project Lunar portion of the Mod My Classic website. Links in the description below. Once you get here, scroll down. You're looking for the link that says installer and 32-bit or 64-bit. Just pick the version that matches your version of Windows, whether you're using 32-bit or 64-bit, and click to download. The file is small and completely safe for your Genesis Mini. Just download it and save it wherever you save files on your computer, downloads folder, or wherever suits you. Once you've got it downloaded, you'll need some Genesis ROMs, either in .md or .bin format. Google is your friend there. Don't plug in your Genesis Mini or anything yet. Just go to File Explorer and go to where you downloaded the Project Lunar Installer. In this case, it'll be the Downloads folder. Here you see the installer and three ROMs in .md or .mega drive format. Not installing Afterburner because it's not compatible yet, but the other two will go in shortly. Go ahead and run the installer. You'll see this message claiming Windows protected your PC. Just click more info and run anyway. It's going to be fine. A few clicks of the next button, along with one yes to confirm the install and everything will be in. The installer is installed on your machine. Go ahead and click close. To begin modding your Genesis Mini, double click the Project Lunar installer. Then come down to this box and click install. The first thing you should see is a message that says you'll need to install the drivers. Go ahead and click OK. This process takes a few minutes, but just let it do its thing. Once it's done, you'll be presented with this screen, which says it's looking for the modded Genesis Mini, which it's not going to find yet because, well, we haven't modded it, and it's not plugged in. That's what it's supposed to do. This is where the fun begins. It's going to ask you if you're ready to do the install. Tell it yes. It will also ask you if you want to see the interactive how-to guide. Tell it yes. And I'm going to show it to you here. And I also want to explain something very important. First of all, the cable that comes with your Genesis Mini to charge it is not a data cable. You're going to have to have a USB micro data cable in order to connect it to your computer. Don't use the one that came with it, it won't work. I understand the ones that come with the NES Mini and Super NES Mini work just fine for this, if you have them laying around. You'll need to put your Genesis Mini in what's called FEL mode, F-E-L mode. It's just a Linux term that means recovery mode. So to do that, unplug all the cables from the Genesis Mini, but plug the USB data cable into your computer. Turn the power switch to on, and hold down the reset button. Then plug the power data cable into the back of the Genesis Mini. And again, let me remind you, you've got to use a data cable, not a power solely cable, or this won't work. Once you plug in the data cable to the back of the Mini, you'll see the Mini power light turn on and then flash off and back on. At that point, you can let go of the reset button and it will be in fell mode. It will immediately start to copy over the image files necessary to run Project Lunar on your Genesis Mini. This process does take a few minutes, so be patient and just let it do its thing. 
If you plug in the HDMI cable while it's doing this process, you'll see some messages on screen. That's doing some very important stuff. One of the things it's doing is it's backing up what's called your NAND. It's a digital encryption key. Great, it's done and everything's all set. Just click the OK button to proceed. And then come down and click Finish. This will take you back to the main installer menu. And this is where you'll go to add the games. So click on Finish and then click on Open Game Manager. You'll see the pre-installed games on the left and some options for adding upgrades on the right. So click Add Game and then select one of your ROMs. For this example, I'm installing OutRun. To add the cover art, go over to this window and click on Get Game Information. You can use Scraper or the Games Database either way. In just a moment, it downloads and then you get this, the original cover art. Very cool. Then just add the game to add it to the queue. This time, Spider-Man Venom Maximum Carnage. Again, add game information. Give it just a few seconds to download and find it in the database. And there you go. Full cover art, including spines. Add the game. If you look to the left, you'll see that the two games that are added are actually in blue. So the original games are grayed out because you cannot delete them. But then the user added content is in blue. To install the games on the Genesis Mini, Synchronize. Click here and tell it yes. You'll see the Project Lunar L logo spinning with a nice shiny reflection. And in just a few moments, you'll have those games transferred over. Games are transferred over. Let's go check it out. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you boot Project Lunar for the first time. You'll get these options. You can also add Retro Arch or you can add ES emulation if you want. We're just staying within the scope of Project Lunar's main Genesis emulation at this point. There's one thing I recommend to do. Go to settings and then come down here to toggle higher CPU and turn that on. This overclocking has been extensively tested and is very reliable and it is a good value add for your game. So go ahead and do this and make sure you save that option. Look on the bottom, you'll see here where it says you have to go down to save, because if you back out and don't do the save first, it won't save the change and overclock your CPU. The console will ask you if you want to save the changes. Of course, tell it yes. It'll restart the console in order to implement the change for the higher CPU speed. Excellent, the console has been upgraded with the higher CPU speed overclocked. Now go into the Project Lunar menu in order to go to the original front end for the Genesis Mini, but you're going to find some new content there. On the main menu, you'll see two new items installed by Project Lunar, Boot Menu and RetroArch. Just makes it easier to navigate back to the main screen. But since we've installed two games over, you're also going to see two new thumbnails. The first one is going to be Spider-Man Venom Maximum Carnage. The game's installed now and ready to play. And there's one more, which is going to be OutRun. I'm going to drill into OutRun and show you how it runs on the Genesis Mini and how it works with the upgraded CPU speed. It's cool. So the games boot up exactly like they did for the original 42 that came with the console except that you can add compatible games and load them straight up on your Jenny Mini. Awesome stuff. It's smooth. It has a very good frame rate, especially with the overclocked CPU. In my opinion, this is an excellent emulation of the original game. It's a lot of fun. To get out of the games, you do the exact same thing you did with the other games, which is just charge or hold down the start button to get to the game's main menu, and it'll let you back out of the game.
Based on the 170 megabytes in total remaining storage after the factory games are installed, you could likely install well over 100 games on your Genesis Mini on the internal memory. Each of the save states takes about one of those megabytes, so be aware of that in terms of selecting the games you install and how many you expect to have. Otherwise, have fun! Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it added value to your gaming experiences, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to like and comment, and subscribe so you don't miss all of the new upcoming original content coming your way soon. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.